Hi friends, I'm going to do a quick video on another roll. This version is not the usual one I do. It's from Heather over at the Needy Homesteader. And she said hers is a crusty version, which we like a little more crunch to our rolls. So I decided to give hers a shot. And I just quickly will go through the ingredients and then we'll get started. It's six cups of flour. I'm just gonna turn this down so you can see all of them. A tablespoon of yeast. Now, a lot of the bakers I've been following use instant. This is regular yeast. I just proof it for a couple of minutes with the warm water and sugar to make sure it bubbles. I have never had a problem, but that's because I use yeast a lot. It doesn't get a chance to go bad. Two tablespoons of sugar, or you could use honey. I use sugar. Two tablespoons of softened butter. I just zonked it in the mic for 10 seconds. And two teaspoons of salt. I'm just using kosher salt. Now, before I do anything, just my personal preference. Also, it's one and a half cups of warm water. I fill my... And I'll bring it over. Oh my gosh, it's heavy. I fill my um, bowl with warm water so that it gets toasty and uh, helps with the blooming of the yeast. So I fill it, give it a minute to heat up since it's a metal bowl, and then I add the water, yeast, and sugar. And we're going to get that going. Let me pour this out. Working with one eye, folks. I scratch the crumbs out of my eye with my fingernail. So, cup and a half of our warm water. the ingredients are ready to be added. I'll give you a quick peek at what it looks like before and then I'll show it to you after it's ballooned a bit. Alrighty, I'm going to show you the yeast and you can see it gets happy looking, kind of bubbly and puffy. One of the ingredients that I forgot to list is she adds a cup of milk. Um, she used powder and warm water. I just used milk from my fridge and I gave it a quick zap in the mic just to take the edge off. And she's also using all-purpose flour. Six cups. So we're going to get that in there. I want to make sure you can see what's happening. Okay. Six cups. And 
nice salt. I'm going to add the salt on top and I'm going to pull it up. Just get it a little bit and then I'll add the rest of the stuff. And we'll start adding the milk. butter into a little bit smaller manageable pieces and then I'll add the rest of the flour get it mixed together nice and smooth till it comes away from the bowl sides. And then once it's uh, not quite as shaggy, then you let it knead this for five minutes. Also, just because I guess I'm a stickler, I go in there with my scraper and I just like to make sure everything is getting in the way it's supposed to. And I'm only on the first knot the first slow speed. It's starting to come away. Okay, now I'm going to put it up to two. Let it go for five minutes and we'll come back when it's done. Alrighty, friends, we're back. And I'm going to just tilt you so you can see um, it's not a sticky dough. And this was five minutes. It looks beautiful. It's smooth. If you find that your dough is sticking to your hands, to the bowl, you can add a little bit more flour. Do a quarter to a half a cup at a time and increase your kneading time for another two minutes until this you get this look because you do not want sticky shaggy dough that is just beautiful that's how it should look now i'm going to take this out see this is just beautiful you just bread doesn't have to be hard or complicated I used to be so afraid of bread and I just put it down swirl it around and flip it over and you let it rise till it's double and we'll come back ok 
Okay, so after an hour, your dough is really puffy. And I'm just going to put it onto my counter. Just press it out. And you should get eight rolls, but you can make them to the size you like. Roll it up. get them all the same size. Okay, so you have your eight rolls. You don't have to do if you don't have it or want to. It's just something I do and I spray it lightly. And then shape. And these are going to rise for a second time. All right, guys, I'm back. Unfortunately, my memory card was full, and of course, it just shut off in the middle of me rolling my rolls. So this is them rising after 30 minutes. I cover with plastic wrap. Some people don't dig that. Go with what makes you happy. I don't, it doesn't bother me. So, you can see they got nice and puffy. They're not perfectly shaped. I'm not worried about that. I have my sesame seeds, which I toast because I make Italian sesame seed cookies, Riginelli. And um, I, I like, you know, you toast them so they're nice and brown instead of white. So I have my sharp knife. I'm just going to give a little pull so that when it rises, this is where it, the steam is going to escape from. And then I have my egg wash. And I just Put that down so my pan isn't traveling. I did four and four. My oven is a European oven and a lot of the European ovens are very small and that was the mistake I made is not looking at the inside measurement. So I cannot fit a full-size cookie sheet in my oven. 
this one is, I want to say 15. That's the biggest I can get in there. I'd like to kick myself for it, but it is what it is. It's a gorgeous stove. I just cannot put big pans in. Let me put on sesame seeds. Hey, bud. Use the second rising time to preheat your oven. It's either 350 or 375. I have to check the recipe. gonna do all sesame seed. I think I'll leave 3.5. Yes, 350. Pop them in. goes for, you see, it's a perfect square. It is what it is. 25 to 30 minutes, and you listen for a hollow sound when you tap. We'll come back and check in 25 minutes. folks. Now just so you know, I have mine running on convection and it's been 20 minutes but I like to just check them. I am going to let them go a little bit more. I'll let them go for the full 25. So they brown up nice, and then we'll come back again and see how they look. And there you have it. Not only does it look beautiful, it smells like heaven in here. I'll include the recipe in the bottom and a link to Heather's.